Hello and welcome to this week's assembly. I wonder if you've ever felt unimportant or second best. Maybe you've even felt useless. Maybe you've been so afraid that you hid. Today's story is about a man just like that who experienced all those things. Do you remember that recently I've told you the stories of Moses and Joshua who both led the Israelites out of Egypt and then into the promised land? Well, this story is set after them about 3000 years ago. So when Joshua died, there was no leaders in Israel and the people just did what they wanted to. Everyone pleased themselves and things were not going well. The countries that lived around Israel started to attack them. And there's one particularly fierce army called the Midianites who rode into Israel on camels, killing the people, stealing their crops and also taking away their, their cattle and their sheep. Israel began to pray and ask God for help. Now, Gideon was a man who thought he was unimportant. And he was also very afraid, afraid of the Midianites. So he was hiding with his wheat in a wine press, which is not where you, you thresh wheat. But he was there because he was frightened. And suddenly an angel appeared and the angel said to him, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Gideon said, if God is with us, why are the Midianites taking all our food? The angel said, but God said he's sending you go in the strength that you have. Gideon didn't believe God and he was afraid. He said, I'm not brave. I'm not a mighty warrior. My family is the weakest in Israel and I'm the least important in my family. But God has said, I am with you. You will defeat. Midian and then the angel left. Wow Gideon thought about what the angel had said but he wasn't really sure he didn't think it was really a message from God and so he prayed and he said God I'm not sure whether it is you speaking to me or not so I want to put out a little test. I will put this bit of wool fleece of wool on the ground and then in the morning when I wake up let all the ground be dry but the fleece wet with dew. And the next morning Gideon went and checked and there was no dew on the ground but the fleece had enough water in it to fill a little bowl when he squeezed it. Do you think Gideon was satisfied with that? No he wasn't. He prayed again Lord I'm sorry I'm still not sure this time let the ground be all wet with dew but the fleece completely dry. And the next morning, guess what? Yep, the fleece was completely dry. And so at last Gideon believed God and said, OK, I'll do it. And he sent out a call to all the men in Israel, asking them to come and join, to volunteer, to fight. Gideon was amazed because 30,000 men volunteered. But God said to Gideon, hang on a minute, you've got too many men. Send some away. But Lord, he said, there's more Midianites than I can count. I need all the help I can. Midian had about 130,000 soldiers. But God knew what he was doing. He always does. And he said, I'm with you. Don't be afraid. Send some men home who are afraid. Let the ones who are afraid go home. And so Gideon allowed those who were afraid to go home. 20,000 men left. So how many soldiers did Gideon have left now? He started off with 30,000, 20,000 left. So there was 10,000. But God said, Gideon, you still have too many men. Here's what I want you to do. But Gideon didn't like God's plan. He didn't like it one little bit. But he obeyed. 
So he took his men down to the river and ordered them to drink. Now some men knelt down on their hands and knees and drunk out of the river like dogs. Other men bent down and scooped water out in their hands and drunk out of their hands. A bit like that. I don't know if you can see that picture. Some knelt down on their knees and some scooped the water out with their hands. And only 300 soldiers scooped it out with their hands like that. And so God sent all the others home. So Gideon was left with 300 men against 130,000. Now Gideon said, God, this is what I want you to do. And Gideon followed God's battle plan. Firstly, he split his men into three groups. So if he's got 300 men, three groups, how many men in each group? 100, that's right. He split them up into three groups of 100. He gave them each a shofar, a ram's horn. Do you remember we talked about that before? And he gave them a jar with a flaming torch in it. And it was night. And he sent them outside the Midianite camp in three different places around the camp. And on Gideon's signal, they blew their shofars, their ram's horns. They smashed their jars so the flames could be seen. And they shouted, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. And guess what happened? The Midianites woke up. And they were half asleep and they were frightened because all they could see was fire around. They heard all this noise and they thought there were hundreds and thousands of soldiers. And they panicked and they start, drew their swords and they were started bumping into one another. And they started fighting one another because they were so confused. And when the fighting stopped, many of the Midianite soldiers had been killed. And the ones who were left alive ran away frightened. They thought they'd been beaten by a massive army. But all it was, was Gideon, 300 men, and God, who knew what he was doing all the time. Gideon defeated the Midianites, and there was peace in Israel for 40 years. And so that story teaches us lots of things, probably about different values. But I've just thought of some values. It's important never to feel unimportant or useless because you're not. If you do feel like that, then talk to a trusted adult. In the end, Gideon took responsibility and he had self-belief. He inspired others and was successful in the end. OK, let's have a quiz. Question one. At the start of the story, Israel's enemy, the Midianites. What did they do? What did the Midianites do? Number two. How did Gideon feel at the start of the story? Number three. What did the angel say to Gideon? Number four, what did Gideon use to test that it was God speaking to him or not? Remember at, at night, he put something on the ground at night. What was it? Number five, how many soldiers did Gideon start off with? Number six, God said there's too many. Send some home if they feel what or if they're a what. Why did God allow some of them to go home if they felt? So many of them did go. How many men was Gideon then left with? At first, not the 300, but the second lot. Number eight. Well, Gideon was left with 300 men. What was his battle plan? He split them up into three groups. And what did they do? When they did it, what did the Midianites do? That's number nine. 
And number 10, when Gideon defeated the Midianites, how long was peace for? How many years was their peace? OK, let's do the answers. Question one. What did the Midianites do? They attacked Israel. They killed people. They stole food and animals. Any of those things would get a point. How did Gideon feel at the start of the story? You could say either unimportant, useless, afraid. Number three, what did the angel say to Gideon? You can either say you're a strong warrior or you will lead Israel in battle. Something like that. Number four, what did Gideon use to, to the, for the test? At night, it was a fleece of wool, a bit of wool. Number five, Gideon started off with 30,000 men. Number six, God allowed them to go home if they felt afraid. Number seven, then Gideon was left with 10,000. Number eight, Gideon split the 300 left into three groups of 100. And he gave them a, 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 a horn, a flaming torch, and they shouted, something like that. What happened to the Midianites? They fought each other. And number 10. There was peace for 40 years. I'd just like to read you a poem called I'm Special. I hope you like it. I'm special. In all the world, there's nobody like me. Nobody has a smile like me. Nobody has my eyes, my hands, my nose, my ears. No one has exactly my handwriting. Nobody anywhere has my tastes in food or music or art. In all of time, there's been no one who laughs like me or cries like me. And what makes me laugh and cry is different from everybody else. I'm the only one in all creation who has my set of abilities. Or there will be always somebody who's better at one of the things that I'm good at. But no one in the universe can reach the quality of all my abilities, ideas, talents and feelings if you put them together. Through all eternity, no one will ever look like me, talk like me, think like me or do like me. I'm rare. And in all rarity, there is great value. Because of my great rare value, I needn't attempt to be the same as others. I can celebrate my difference. I'm special. I'm beginning to realise it's no accident that I'm special. I'm beginning to see that God loves me and he likes me. I'm beginning to see that God has a very special job for me, a special purpose. He must have a job for me to do that no one else can do as well as me. Out of the billions of people, only one has the right combinations of what it takes. That one is me because I'm special. And you are special too. I'm going to say a little prayer now. And as usual, if you like my prayer and want to make it yours, you can say amen at the end. Dear God, we thank you for the story of Gideon. We thank you that all of us are special. None of us are unimportant. We thank you that there is a plan and a purpose for our lives. I pray that when we face fears or difficulties, we be able to look for help and that you'd help us come through and help us to get where we want to go. And let us always remember, God, that each one of us is special. Amen. Amen. Bye. Bye. See you soon. <laughs>